Now imagine that, Shaq actually putting the books back as she's talking about them in the video. Fucking imagine. Hey, listen. Hey besties. Daddy. Do I look like- I got bored of my intro and outro, so I decided to make new ones. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Shaq and today I'm gonna to be going through some spooky book recommendations that I have for you. If you're looking for a spooky book to read in the month of October and you don't have really any recommendations or any inspiration, then look no further because I have some of my favorite spooky reads in this video. So I feel as though I talk about these books just on loop, like on a cycle, and I feel like I'm getting bored. And if I'm getting bored, then so are you. I feel like I just talk about the same books over and over and over again. I think this is a common thing for people on booktube or just on the book today in general. I just feel like I talk about the same books. So to kind of combat this, I decided to do a video in conjunction with this one, talking about all the spooky books still on my TBR that I have yet to read. So that'll be coming in about two weeks, I think, from this video. I think I've got a video in between just to break it up a little bit. But for now, we're gonna be giving you some of my standard, you know, classic stories with Shaq. Creepy, spooky book recommendations, perfect for the fall October aesthetic, the feel. The first one has to be a beloved classic of mine that I actually read for the first time this year because I was too intimidated to read any classic Classics. So this year was the year that I picked them up. And that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This isn't necessarily a traditionally spooky read. I think it is still horror, but it's more like the thriller creepy side. Essentially, we're following our main character who is nameless until she marries Maxim de Winter. So I'm just gonna call her Mrs. de Winter for now. So our main character, Mrs. de Winter, marries into Max's heritage. She inherits the house, the husband, and she thinks that she's got it all. Until she realizes that being married to Max doesn't really live up to the expectation that she did have. And she is just living her life and her marriage in the shoes of Max's late wife, Rebecca. This is so creepy, and I think what made it even creepier is the fact that all of the narrators in this novel are just so untrustworthy, especially Max and also the main character. Rebecca is a ghost, but the thing is, is that she doesn't come as a physical manifestation of a ghost, I don't think. But Rebecca is dead, and the only kind of opinions we have about Maxim's deceased wife is other people's opinions of her, and none of them match up, none of them are the same, um, because obviously it depends what kind of side of Rebecca you saw. So I find that incredibly interesting, thought-provoking, and most importantly, quite disturbing, quite creepy. There are loads of reasons why this kind of fits in with the autumnal, spoopy, aesthetic feel. There are loads of content warnings, including like murder, and happy marriages, attempts of like, or thinking of attempting suicide, all the things that really like, you would find from a horror book, really. This is a classic, and I found it really intimidating, my own reading experience. I actually did vlog this, and I was just losing my mind for like 20 minutes. It was absolutely phenomenal. In my reading experience though, I decided to read via the audiobook, which I found very, very spoopy and scary, and actually just made the experience a lot less intimidating. The audiobook is narrated exceptionally well. Um, there are like bits of filler in this, in this version I have, um, but I read the original version via audiobook and there's like little snippets of music that's really spooky and suspenseful and perfect for kind of getting into that spooky aesthetic read. So yeah, definitely recommend Rebecca for getting into the spooky season, especially the audiobook because it's really creepy. It's really fucking creepy. The next book I have is also kind of a classic horror and I also do have a vlog for this one if you want to go and watch that as well. I'll link them both down below. But that is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Again, this is classic horror. Can be quite intimidating but definitely worth the read. Essentially we're following Louis and his family uh, which consists of his wife Rachel and two children, Gage and I can't remember his daughter's name. I'm so sorry. Basically Louis and his wife Rachel and their two children and basically how like death comes into their life and how them as a unit, as a family unit, deal with grief and death. We have two contrasting protagonists in this book. I'd say that Louis is probably the main one. He is a doctor so he deals with both life and death but he's never really considered his own grief and death until it happens very closely to him where one of his patients dies like in his lap. I'm not going to go too much into the plot and like spoilers. This kind of catalyst event of his patient dying in his lap kind of kickstarts what grief and death mean for Louis. And this whole book kind of revolves around Louis and his wife, Rachel. It revolves around their psyche being broken down because of grief and turning into monsters, which I think has amazing undertones and contextual like ideas that Stephen King puts across is that we are all just humans, but we turn into the, the monsters when we are going through grief and we're grieving. We can let it consume us sometimes. I think this book is so creepy for multiple reasons. And I think I found it really creepy on personal level 
novels because this was one of my auntie's favorite books and she is has now passed away so that just added like a little bit of an edge for me i think from like an in-personal level though and actual in contents of the book i think what makes it even scarier is the irony um, of the novel. It is such a real story and although it does have a magical like paranormal twist to it Obviously, we don't all have pet cemeteries to bring things back from the dead It is so grounded in reality and the ugly face of death and grief and how uncertain it all is and how we can all just be unraveled because of our loved ones unfortunately passing away. A very dark read. If you can stomach it, I definitely recommend Pet Cemetery. There's also a movie which I haven't seen yet. Maybe I will watch it actually in October because it is spooky. Would highly recommend this. I really loved it and it was just really creepy. That's all I can really say. What more do you want? Now, if you don't think I talk about those two books often enough on my channel, you'll definitely agree with me in the fact that I definitely talk about this book way too often. And that is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Again, a fucking game. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. This is the first book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy and we're basically following Rowan and Citra as they are Scythe Faraday's apprentices. They're trying to navigate this world, this heavily dystopian world, where we have gone past the age of mortality and humans are immortal. To combat the world being overpopulated and overwhelmed with information, the Thunderhead, which is kind of like Siri, I guess, it will send out scythes, um, which are just like regular people who are just a little bit authoritative, to essentially glean, kill people, um, in order to keep the peace and keep the order of the world. This comes with such mega twists, and honestly, I just had my mouth hanging open for the entire time. It has some actually quite bad tropes in here, but if you can get past that and suspend your disbelief, I think that anyone could really like this book. What makes it scary is the dystopian nature, and even how this could happen in real life, because humans are living longer thanks to science and technology, and I feel as though this this could actually happen. Like The Hunger Games, I think it has a little edge on it because this could actually happen. We also have really morally grey characters in here that you love but also they make really bad decisions. There's also some bad characters that make some good decisions that you actually kind of want to like. And it's just a whole fuck fest of basically morally grey characters navigating this world of morality and what the right thing is to do. There is also amazing fight sequences. I feel like Neil Shuston just has a really big talent for A, writing in general, but also B, writing sequences with a lot of fighting, a lot of movement movement and it makes it so action packed. There's so many twists and turns and just things to get your teeth stuck into, pun intended. Um, and it's just such a good read. Genuinely, it really is, especially the first book. My next recommendation is one of my absolute favorite. It's both one of my favorite movies and also books. And that is Pan's Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro and Cornelia Funk. This book is translated from Spanish. So although this book isn't perfect with its translations and its meanings, I definitely would still recommend it. Pan's Labyrinth is essentially about the civil war in Spain um, after the second world war, I think. It it's a historical tale about Ophelia who is learning about coming of age and growing up as a young woman in Spain in these peace years. She learns about corruption, fame and fortune as she is navigating between a magical world full of fauns, fairies and labyrinth. But also she's trying to navigate the real world where her mother is having a baby with a captain and he is an arsehole, for a lack of a better word. <laughs> the director and writer of this, um, Guillermo del Toro, describes Pan's Labyrinth as a fairy tale for adults. It is so grotesque in its magical realism and also also, the context and subject matter of the actual book being so real and rooted in, in Spanish history makes it all the more like grotesque because this actually happens to people. Very much so would recommend Paz Labyrinth if you're into, you know, creepy, grotesque things. Uh, it's very heavily like magical realism, urban fantasy that sort of thing. It's full of like fantastical elements, fantastical foes and friends, and just a great read all overall. And it is definitely a must read for this October. So I've got two more books for you. And these are actually two books that I don't own anymore, even though I still would recommend them. They were definitely one-time books for me. What I mean by this is that I'm not going to really reread them, so I decided to give them to people who would reread them and would enjoy them for the first time. I just wasn't going to reread them again, but they're still good reads for to get you into the spirit of October. My first book that I have to recommend to you that I don't own is Warm Bodies. I'm not sure who this is by. I think it's Isaac something. That's definitely his name. Warm Bodies is about a self- reflexive zombie, he's very aware of his actions and that he is a zombie, um, called R, who essentially meets a girl, I believe, and they kind of try and find a cure for a zombie-ness, and all he wants to do is make friends, eat brains, and just live his life as a zombie. I think what makes it maybe interesting, rather than necessarily spooky or creepy, is the fact that we're coming from a point of view of a zombie. It can be quite comical at times, but obviously it is still gross because it is still like a zombie apocalypse book. I think it's really refreshing to have this different point of view and it definitely gives the horror genre a little bit of a, a revive, a little bit of a kick that it needed. So if you're not into really zombie 
stuff or even if you are and you haven't read Warm Bodies yet definitely would recommend again the, the movie is really good I think it does it better than the book actually and I did have some problems I remember with Warm Bodies um, but definitely would recommend for the spooky season something a little bit different something a little bit funny just to keep on your toes and the last book I had to recommend to you actually wasn't one of my favorites but I definitely can see why other people love this book and that is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera so I think everyone and their mother has read this by now and if you haven't then the premise of this is that They Both Die at the End is basically about death cast which tells you when you're going to die on the day that you're gonna die and essentially the two main characters Rufus and Mateo are told that they're gonna die at the same day and they meet through an online app called The Last Friend and so they live their both of their last days with each other that is such a basic description of the plot of this book but you get what it says on the tin it's very heartbreaking and everyone loves it so if you haven't read it yet I definitely would give it a chance because it obviously has hype for a reason I just had a little bit of like niggling problems with it the thing that makes it I think spooky or a little bit creepy is obviously the subject matter and the content you wouldn't pick up this book not wanting to know about death and you know people dying because it is literally a book about death and I feel like that's what it gives it the spooky edge of course you obviously Obviously, no swing is going to happen because of the title of the book they both die at the end and it's just kind of like you know that Rufus and Mateo are living their literal last day on earth together and this really brings up the stakes and makes the book so tense and I think that's also why it makes it a little bit creepy and perfect for October and Halloween although this book does center around death and you know dying in your last day on earth it also does celebrate life and the meanings of life and it is also very thought-provoking we get other points of views apart from Rufus and Mateo which kind of took me out of the story I'm not gonna lie um, but it kind of gives you a scope of what the world looks like and really enables character and world development. Overall, really good read. I liked it when I read it, I really did. Um, so I would really recommend this for the spooky season just to get you in the mood and also to maybe make you cry a little bit because who want a little bit of a sob? You know, it's very spooky to sob. Well, there you have it. Those are all of my recommendations for the spooky season. I really hope that you enjoyed and I really hope that you got maybe one more book or a couple more books to add to your spooky October TBR. Again, I'll be doing a video in conjunction with this one all about the books that are still on my TBR that are kind of spooky, are kind of horror. So do watch out for that one if you want to see some new reads we talk about some actual new book but there you go there are all my speak recommendations if you like this video or find it useful in any way please give my a thumbs up and subscribe i hope to see you in my next video but in the meantime i hope you, that you enjoy any reads that you pick up and yeah i hopefully see you next time goodbye